Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mont. Welcome into today's video. Before we go ahead and get started, help us get to 2,500 subs here on the channel. You saw all of our coverage for the Julio Jones trade saga, which ended just a couple of days ago, or really yesterday. We have plenty more breakdowns in terms of other Falcons news and rumors all year long. So go ahead, go down below, and hit subscribe. All right, Falcon fans, it's a Monday. You know what that means. Let's jump in the latest Falcons news and rumors. And we have an update, essentially 24 hours since Julio Jones was traded to the Tennessee Titans. And Ian Rappaport from the NFL Network gave us some more insight in terms of how the deal went down and what the offers on the table were that weren't the Titans. So let's jump into this uh, right now. We'll start with, of course, as you know, Julio Jones traded. Had a video up on that yesterday. They're getting back a 2022 second and a 2023 fourth. They also, or 2023 fourth, excuse me. They also go ahead and give the, uh, the Tennessee Titans a 2023 sixth round draft pick. The big news today, though, we learned this very uh, uh, Ian Rapp report on Good Morning Football. The Falcons were never offered a first round draft pick, and the Titans were one of the few football teams that were going to take all of the Falcon contract that they currently have with Julio Jones. That way, Atlanta is completely clear of him, and they don't have to pay him any of that ridiculous money that he was, of course, owed. Now, again, quick recap of the trade. You see it up on your screen right now. Initial thoughts on this was it's a pretty darn good deal. I mean, honestly, this is what we expected the trade to go ahead and look like. And if the reports are true, which we'll read you here in just one second. This is the best offer by far. Let me say that again. By far, the Falcons were offered in terms of the compensation in return for Julio Jones. Now, here was the new report this morning from Ian Rappaport via Good Morning Football. Throw that up on your screen right now. Quote, the Titans had very clearly the best offer for Julio Jones. No one came close to that. They never had a clean first rounder, rounder offered at all from anyone during the process. End quote. Now, it's important to note this, and this is going to be very important for Falcon fans going forward because there are a lot of people still upset that the Falcons did not get a first-round draft pick for Julio Jones. No one ever offered a first. There was no first on the table. I know we reported and we talked about the report here that Diane Rossini from ESPN said there was a first-round draft pick on the table. Turns out that was just smoke. It wasn't true. Now, it doesn't mean that someone didn't offer a sole-up first-round draft pick. What it means is that if they did offer a first-round draft pick, then there were some other compensations that the Falcons were not going to go ahead and bow down to essentially. I'm sure there was a team out there that might have dangled a first round draft pick and said, we'll give you a first, but you got to eat some of the Jones contract. And the Falcons said, we can't do that. We have no money. So we're out. So the best offer they possibly had was the Titans offer. And it seems like the Titans were really the only football team willing to offer a second round draft pick plus a fourth round draft pick. And you got to go back to Arthur Smith's connection with Tennessee. I mean, the guy was the offensive coordinator with the Titans last year. He has some pull with that organization. I'm sure he was able to you know, make this deal a little bit sweeter for the Falcons, perhaps the fourth round draft pick and then the sixth going back to them. It makes a lot more sense now that you go ahead and look at it. But I think Falcon fans need to rest assured that they got the best offer that they could. You got to remember what's going on with Julio Jones. Julio Jones had a ton of strikes, as I like to call them, that essentially caused him to no longer be a Falcon. Let's just go through them. Wrong side of 30. He's getting a little old. Missed seven games last year with a hamstring injury. Um, the production had been dipping for the past couple of years. Called out Matt Ryan saying his arm was a little bit too weak. And then the undisputed phone call, which was an absolute mess with Shannon Sharp. I mean, goodness gracious, that's five strikes and you are out. He wanted out all along. The Falcons tried to trade him before the draft, were not able to get a first-round draft pick. They tried to trade him during the draft, nothing. Now, after the draft, still trying for that first-round draft pick, unable to make it work, and finally settled on getting a second in return, which is good compensation. I mean, an additional second next year, that could be a starter, where you could package that and move up. We know how the draft works. And they're able to be rid and clean of the Falcons, or I say Julio Jones's contract, which is ridiculous to say the least, and saving that money is going to go a long way for their future success. Now, Calvin Ridley steps into the spotlight, as he did last year. I mean, the guy was great when Julio Jones was not in there, but it's not just Ridley. The rest of the Falcon wide receiver core has got to play well, because now there's no room for error, right? Originally, you'd have Julio and then Ridley, and then the two of them would have been a great one-two punch or were a great one-two punch. You don't really need a third wide receiver. Now, Russell Gage has got to play better. Now, that was a long day Zacchaeus, or Frank Darby has to step up, and we all understand and know this, but it still is a good receiving core, regardless of the fact that Jones, who is a legend, and a Falcon great is no longer going to go ahead and be there. Give me your grade on the Julio Jones trade. Like, I mean, a scale from 1 to 10. What's your grade on the Julio Jones trade 24 hours after it officially went down early Sunday morning? 1 to 10 is the scale. I'm going to go for an 8. Again, I think this is the best compensation they possibly could have had. I think that they had to trade Julio Jones because the contract and obviously all the issues that he was having off the football field recently with the undisputed call were all a necessary result of what became official on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. And so give me your grade for the Julio Jones trade down below. 
All right, before we go ahead and keep going today, today's video is brought to you guys by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, use the promo code FALCONS to get 20% off your first order plus free shipping on their brand new, just recently dropped, Lawnmower 4.0. It gives you the best shave as well as the protection guard. That means you're going to have no nicks down south. Again, long lasting battery life, different size trimmers. It is a massive upgrade from the 3.0. The 3.0 was pretty darn good if I do say so myself. So again, manscaped.com, use that promo code FALCONS in your first order to get 20% off plus free shipping. And of course, pick up the Lawnmower 4.0. You will not be disappointed. I'll jump into some more Falcons news and rumors here and get into the OTA news and notes. So the Falcons had a voluntary OTA the past couple of days, and tomorrow it'll start the official mandatory OTAs. And there are some short headlines and storylines I want to jump into here, the way you're up to date on everything happening with our Falcons. So the first is there, were, there was a report last week, you know, Dante Fowler did not report to the mandatory minicamp, or the sorry, the voluntary OTA. And so people were kind of wondering, is he going to report for voluntary OTAs? And it was confirmed that he will be at the OTAs tomorrow. That is good news. Marlon Davidson, another Another story here has impressed a lot during the voluntary OTAs. I mean, head coach Arthur Smith said he's looking really, really good. Has been very impressed with where Davidson is here in year two. And then Hayden Hurst, he was talking to uh, a couple of outlets, and there was one interesting uh, a quote he has via Scott Bear that he is slimmed up. He's like down to 8% body fat. He's being more quick vertically, and he's expecting a big breakout year despite the fact the Falcons did not go ahead and give him or exercise the fifth-year option on his contract. So I'll hit on each one again here quickly. The Fowler thing is not that big of a deal because just because he missed voluntary OTAs did not mean he would miss mandatory OTAs, but there was a lot of reports from the AJC saying it might happen. Arthur Smith put that to bed. We expect to see Dante Fowler at practice tomorrow for the first round of voluntary OTAs. He's going to be a big part of this defensive line and needs to have a big year because we know how bad the Falcons defensive line is. The Marlon Davidson stuff is really good. So there is a quote from uh, head coach Arthur Smith saying he just loves what he's seen so far from Davidson. And of course, this is really the first time Marlon Davidson's really been healthy going into a season in his Falcons career. Now, it's a very young Falcons career, but the guy was not healthy at all last year and hardly got on the football field. And a lot of people instantly labeled him a bust. The Falcons need a big year from Marlon Davidson. Like, we need a big year from Davidson because if you look at the current defensive line, there's not a lot there. I mean, we've talked about it a lot. Yes, you have Grady Jarrett, and yes, maybe Dante Fowler can be good. But after those two, who do you have? Davidson's a second-round draft pick. Those guys are supposed to play and start almost instantly. He had zero impact last year. The hope is that he plays well this year. It's still very early in training camp, or at least very early in OTA. He's not even at training camp, but so far the report is Davidson is looking really, really good. And finally here, Hayden Hurst, who they, you know, traded for last year, didn't do much in the offense. Now they drafted Kyle Pitts, so he gets bumped down on the roster. They don't exercise his fifth-year option on his contract, and so people are wondering what's his mindset going into the season. And Hurst told Scott Baer that he's feeling pretty darn good. Look at this quote right now. Quote, what I bring to the table is pretty unique as far as my vertical speed and how I'm able to move at my size. The way I play in games, my tempo is, is, is a match to the system. I think it's a great offense, and I'm excited. I think that in my fourth year, I'm going to get used, utilized vertically. That's what I was able to do in college. Finally, an offensive coordinator can see that and utilize it this year. So high praise, of course, for the new regime. And, of course, Arthur Smith being the offensive coordinator slash head coach for the Atlanta Falcons. He also, again, not quoted there, but mentioned in the article by Scott Bear that he's down to 8% body fat and is in the best shape of his life, which is a good thing for Falcon fans who are hopefully going to have two tight ends, not just Kyle Pitts, having an impact on offense, obviously with Julio Jones no longer being there as well. Before we go ahead and end, drop a like for mandatory OTAs getting started tomorrow. I mean, the full entire football team, team essentially is going to be out on the practice field at Flat branch tomorrow and they're going to start the process as they had you know some people weren't there last week and now everyone's going to hopefully be there it's going to be an interesting start as the offseason continues continues to chug along and we get closer and closer to the late july training camp report date which will be here before you know it all right, ultimately for today here on Atlanta Falcons Today. Again, go ahead and make sure you guys are subscribed. We're trying to get this channel growing as quickly and fast as possible to give you guys the latest in terms of Falcons news and rumors. We have a lot of people who want to know what's going on with our Falcons, and so if you're one of them, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button. Again, ultimately for today here on Atlanta Falcons Today, Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.